guys and welcome to It's Raining That's Draw. Today's video is going to be themed around how to draw organic shapes. The other day I found this beautiful centripod shell when I was out for a walk. So I felt an urge to draw it and then I thought I might as well share some tips on drawing organic shapes with you guys. Besides this centripod shell I'll be drawing a bonus shape at the end of this video so hold on. Before getting down to, to draw it, I will just um, I have an advice uh, when you draw organic shapes. For instance, if you're out in the woods, um, you can take a branch with your home or on the beach, you can take a mussel with your home or a rock. And then before you start drawing it, um, then, then physically feel the shape. You can really get a lot achieved when you just feel it with your fingers. So you get a sense of its volume you get a sense of its three-dimensionality and where are the breaking points actually and this will really help you to understand the basics of the shape and in the end better ability to create shades and tones and yeah really represent this beautiful shape in drawing. I will be using hatching and cross hatching as a technique as a drawing technique if you haven't seen my video on the basics of how to hatch and cross hatch there's a link here um, but uh, enough chit chat, let's go on and draw a centripod shell. So welcome to my drawing table here. I just wanted to show you the thing I'm using today. Just a simple Wacom tablet. I already made some sketches here. Um, and the perspective from where I will be looking at this centripod shell is here. So I just place a white paper here. Um, and this white paper has the effect that it's it's a bit easier to to draw the shape now and I'm not so distracted by the surface of the table so the white paper really helps here this is approximately the perspective from which from my from which I will be seeing the the center by shell and therefore draw it okay i'm using this brush here digital brush called fontana to the paper uh, which I like because it has this great sketch feel to it. I will start here by making a sketch of the outline of the centripod shell. So basically, basically just tracing the object here. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and make it slightly bigger here just so you can better see the, the shape of it. Let's go this way. And here I'm careful about getting the proportions right. This is quite important. So it doesn't gonna end up look like a cinnamon roll <laughs> instead of a centripod shell. So I pay close attention to where this shape comes inwards toward the circle, this circling motion here. Mm. And this has to go more like this. Like so actually, whoops, like so. Mm -hmm. And then we have the shape coming in somewhere here. So this one is also has to be bigger like this. And this is a study, this is not a perfect drawing, this is just a study. Which I think relieves some of the pressure that you sometimes feel when you want to draw something it has to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. Just have fun with it, use your eyes, trust your eyes. It goes around here. And then I see that there's actually quite a sharp thing coming here. So pay attention to those curves and straights. Mm. Nothing in nature is straight, but sometimes you get some straights where you expect to get curve and that's how it is. Studying nature is just full of surprises. And here we have a straight again, actually. Like so up here. I'm sure you can find plenty of videos on YouTube on the golden section and stuff and I'm pretty sure that this 
Central Park Chill here applies to the rules of the Golden Ratio or the Fibonacci wave. It's simply just a great thing here. Where was I? Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. So one, two, three, and then it goes here. Oops, there, there, and round. More round here, and then down here, actually. We get down in the nitty gritty now. And I have to look a little bit closer here, like so. There we go. So just cleaning up a bit here. And it's okay actually, I quite, I quite like this sketchy feel to it, it's, it's okay. Uh, you can always go ahead later and, and do a really finished work of this, but now we have the initial sketch here. To you guys who saw my video on hatching and cross hatching the basics, uh, you would know that it would be quite easy to have to create tone on a square or a cube here. If we had light going here, you had this this surface would be light, yeah. This surface would be medium tone, and this surface up here would be more dark, so we had a sense of three-dimensionality. But this shell right here is not a cube. This shape is way more complex than this cube over here. So what we want to do is start by analyzing the shape here. Um, so again, as my, my previous video, I will start making a skeleton here or some lines that follow the shape, just like I, when drawing a cylinder, I would have some imaginative lines following the, the shape of the cylinder. I will apply now the same kind of strategy for this to kind of get a sense of its three-dimensionality. So you can see actually that there are some lines that help us on, on the shell here. And I'll be using these as a guide. Just tracing the lines that I can see on the shell here and actually just feeling my way through the form. It's round here. Coming from all the way, imagine it's, it's from inside, I'm inside of the shell here, comes all the way up here, catches up here on the silhouette and then it goes all the way down here. Like that, it's like a pipe, it's like a tube that's been rolled around itself. Like that, yeah. And here it goes from the inside here. And round, 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 a bit more straight. Here comes a straight, we're looking at it from straight here. And then you have the same here shape going up again. So now we have our skeleton on, we have our shape lines here. Let's go ahead and break this into an understandable shape when we have to do our hatching. Because this shape right here is somewhat a thing between a sphere and a donut, I would say. We're light having this way and light this way. So shade on the left side over here. Everything over here is going to be in shade, these left sides here, and then also probably a bit beneath the shell here. So I'm going to go ahead and just sketch in where I want the highlight to be the light part of the, of the shell so you can, you can see. Uh, 
There we go. So our highlight then is going to be somewhere around here. That's like the, the peak of this shape. This is where the light will really bounce off. And then this shape here in the middle, this shape here, it was gonna be an echo of this over here. So we actually just go ahead and apply some sketching here of the highlight. There we go. I can now start hatching because I know where to put my, my tone. My core shadow will be around 90 degrees to this highlight. So somewhere around here, and everything else is going to be mid-tone. So let's go ahead and add our hatching. Now like the cylinder in the previous video I made on hatching, I'm going to follow the shape here with curved hatchings. So actually I will just use these guidelines that we already set up for ourselves. And they were gonna gonna look something like this. And I just try to focus on not hitting our highlight sketch here. And after a while of doing these studies, you are going to be able to don't have to think so much about where to put your highlight and then you you don't have to sketch in the highlight you can just the highlight is is in your head so to speak it's you know where it is so you will know where to leave some tone this way this way and then down this shape goes like down this way leaving some shadow because the light is here right so we want this shape also to have some some hatchings down here. This goes away from the light. Likewise, over here later, we're going to add, add that. Uh, and now we actually have some light hitting this surface, right? Because as our donut shape, we see that this is in light. So this should also remain in light, yeah? Um, and we can go ahead and add, work on our shape up here instead. This is our middle tone. The same as we just did before. I'm not hitting that highlight area. And then here again, we are going to go up, following our guidelines. And likewise here, we don't want more light. And actually I've made a mistake here because I should go ahead and remove some tone over here because this is where the light is coming, yeah? Like so. As we saw with our analysis of the donut here, we have light also coming here, so this should remain blank. Let's go back to our shape here. We're on the left side. So, and then we just have a tiny, tiny amount of a shape going up this way, like so. Just gonna add in some more tone here. The shell has these small canyons near the lines here, quite important. Just gonna go and add a little bit of those in. It's also creates some variety, like you have sketchy line, then you have some something darker here. This adds to the three-dimensional effect. Bit here down as well. 
Okay. Now we have our highlights down. Let's see, like this, yeah. Uh, we can go ahead and add just a tiny little bit here on this part. It's okay. The light still comes from this side and in, yeah. So now we're gonna start and do some cross hatching to really get that tone. And as mentioned before, we know that our core shadow is somewhere around here. So this is my aim to keep that core shadow around here. Let me start by going here, this way up here, yeah. This is where we want our darkest tone to be, so to speak. And let's just go the other way. Make sure they cross and the spacings are somewhat even. Like this. And the same thing over on this shape here. And down here, just a small amount here of cross hatchings. And like so. I feel that this part over here is a bit too much affected by bounce light. So I think we will add some more hatchings here just to kind of fade this thing out here, give it some more shade. Because this part here, the surface is not receiving any light, so this should be quite dark. And instead, let's just give it around more with some hatchings here on the core shadow. Let's go this way. This is a good thing about cross hatching. You can always get it darker. Just make sure you don't cover it completely in black because then you will destroy the shape rather than, de rather than describing it. Like so. I think we can add some more here because our middle tone here can be a bit darker than it was. And this way you can kind of just play around with it and see what way you want to go with it. Keep dancing on that shape. And as you can tell, as it gets darker, the, the drawing is also gonna pop more and more. I think I will stop around here and then I will just add a bit more on the silhouette here just to Give it a sense of a compact shapes. Hi. It's also gonna. So there we have it. Um, the center part shell here. Okay, so this was the center part shell here. I hope you enjoyed this analysis and this approach to how to draw an organic shape. Let's go ahead to our bonus shape now. Okay, so yes, we are going to draw this banana here. And as before, I'll just start by applying a sketch. So this is just to create a sketch now, just before analyzing. And this is this is a um, this is a more uh, more um, 
this is a more simple shape than our centipod shell here because if we were to analyze this shape we basically have a box like so yeah except that this box just has a surface over here that meets up with the box and a surface down here um, before we had the light coming this way let's just mess a bit around and have the light coming from this way because learning this hatching and cross hatching techniques without copying the light lets you as an artist decide where you want the light coming from so just by analyzing the shape we, we will know how the shading is going to be when we know where the light is because when light is coming from here we have our highlight here we're going to have a middle zone here on this part here and then we're going to have our dark zone down here which we will hatch really effectively so on this sketch I just put in the breaking points of the banana here so goes like this and then it catches up here again actually it follows the shape here and then it turns into this shape here and the same thing here we have the shape going out here and then the breaking point is here, I could tell. Like so, so already now in our sketch, we have a sense of three dimensionality, but let's just go ahead and, and hatch. We know that our light is coming. Let me just clean this one up a bit. Yes, we know that now that our light comes from this part, so we know that our shape is going to be, our middle tone is going to be on this plane right here. And as you've seen in my video, you can render this box shape thing in, in whichever direction you want. So you can go this way, you can go that way, you can go cross or diagonal, I mean. I think I will go with just some simple horizontal lines here. And they start to curve a bit because I follow the, the shape here of the, the curve of the banana. Yeah, and then we have the shape down here. And this shape down here is kind of like you have this edge and then it goes down. So here I'm shifting from horizontal to vertical strokes actually. Let's go ahead and see how that looks. And then we go curve actually because I can tell that I'm looking at the banana here while I'm drawing. I can tell that the shape goes slightly inwards here. And then let's do some hatching, cross hatching here to, to create the sense that this is really The darkest tone here, the thing that's really facing away from the light. Like so. And we might as well just for fun, go ahead and add some color here to the banana. So there you have it. Um, and I realized that this hatching thing here on the shape here is, it was more to be uh, exemplifying how, how these hatchings and cross hatchings will help you in time learning the technique of dancing on the shape really you can always go ahead and add or remove more strokes but it just creates this amazing tool for you this freedom to decide how your shape should go how you want to describe the shape and I think here actually I might go ahead and erase some of the hatchings that we did on the mid-tone here because the, the the changes here on the banana here are not so um, hard on the banana here so we might as well go ahead and just erase here and look how also erasing here the hatching create this beautiful effect it's letting the shape step forward
This is the magic of hatching and cross hatching really. It's so versatile and it's just pure fun. There we go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to subscribe for this channel because there are coming more drawing videos up soon. And all there is to say now is have fun drawing. <laughs>